Hi everyone and welcome to completion time. Yes, Morton has managed to scrape together all the studio albums of a favorite band of his and collection complete. This does not include live albums or compilation albums. In fact, I don't think this band had any live albums. Um, but um, I might be wrong. I still don't think so. So the band in question is City Boy. City Boy. They started out when two uh, kids met in school at the age of seven. And they stayed friends. And stayed friends for so long that they started playing in pubs for beer. And that's uh, where sort of the musical collaboration between these two started. The guys were Lol Mason and Steve Broughton. And they would later on meet another guitarist in a pub called Chris Dunn. And from there on, they would recruit more people. Uh, they would play sort of folksy uh, acoustic guitar music in pubs until they started uh, in the early 1970s started thinking about going electric and from there on they uh, started proper bands they went under a few uh, different names um, songs of the loin and back in the band and it was as back in the band I think that they managed to get a record deal and they changed the name to city boy they were very early on in their uh, recording career actually from the Early start, um, fairly. Um, let's say they they were different in the way that they had several uh, vocalists. So, like for example, Queen, they uh, had s several members doing uh, lead vocals, but also harmonies and so on. And they uh, became very uh, musically and technically proficient. At a time when maybe that wasn't necessarily a good thing, um, there already were prog bands. These guys were more power pop rock oriented, and they did not look like the guys in England who were popular at that time, uh, glam rockers. And also they got lots of great reviews from uh, uh, music critics. For you know their musicianship at a time when that maybe was frowned upon because punk came along. A very early collaborator with the band was Robert Mutt Lang, the producer, who of course became world famous after this. He became sort of a seventh member of the band. Uh, he helped a lot with harmonies and early on with bass playing and so on. This was his first production gig uh, in England after he moved from South Africa. So let's have a look at the records. So the debut album was City Boy. And as you can see, first of all, I just thought that was a pattern after I got the record. I can see that it's actually a beautiful cityscape of sorts. So they landed on the, at the time, fairly new uh, Vertigo imprint. Here's an early example of that. I love those is it spaceships. Not uh, listened to this one yet. Uh, I was waiting for the last two records to arrive. Uh, of course, I've heard several of the others that I've had for years. My first City Boy experience was when I was a little boy. I pestered my parents uh, for records all the time. My older siblings haven't given And um, one of the albums that I uh, received was City Boys, uh, The Day the Earth Caught Fire. Uh, I don't have that one here. <laughs> it, uh, it's not in the best of shape, so I had to rebuy it. Um, so anyway, we have their second album, City Boys, Dinner at the Ritz. This is a copy I actually bought in the wild here in Oslo and three or four years back. Beautiful used comics and record shop. And I just found out that it did not survive the pandemic. It closed. Yes. So here's the inlay for this record. 
I found out later that the uh, inner sling is actually from an, a different City Boy record. And here's that Mercury um, imprint. If you see there at the bottom, it says not land. Sure, exactly where this release is from since it's on a different. Yeah, I think this is North America. They would later go on to Atlantic Records in Canada and the US. Their third album, which is the last one that I um, received in the mail a couple of days ago, here we have City Boy with that. Person on the cover, Young Men go, Gone West. Some funny stores in the background there. And there's the band. Yeah, uh, Vertigo uh, is an imprint of uh, Phonogram. So I think they were one of the early ones on that. Vertigo, here we are back on Vertigo. Sure, there's a lot of you out there who knows these things far better than me. There's the band again. I love that the inner sleeves are here. And then we go on to maybe their bestseller Book Early. And it featured their biggest uh, single hit. 5705. Uh, it made it to, to the top 10 in uh, the UK and made it to 20, number 27 in the US. And I think you can recognize the inner sleeve. It's just the inner sleeve in the previous record I showed you. So, still a European copy. I noticed on Discord. Discogs, that a lot of the copies that were available to purchase uh, were Norwegian. So, I think Norway was the production hub for Northern Europe or Scandinavia, or they just did better here than in a lot of, a lot of other countries. I'll get back to that for the final record. So this is the record that I, that I like the most, and the one that I actually also have on CD, the only one I also have on CD. Uh, this is the day the earth caught fire and when i saw that album cover when i was a kid i just thought it was the coolest thing ever i just would stare at it for, for a long time i mean competing with kiss albums that's saying something and there's the pan and now unfortunately um Although it did well, fairly well, um, critics liked it, and the um, Daily Earth Caught Fire was a fairly relatively big uh, hit. Uh, look at, by the way, song number two here, it's only the end of the world. So there's a harmonica player on, on that track, and that's Mr. Huey Lewis. His first uh, recording of any kind. still on the Vertigo label, 1979. So unfortunately, um, this was the last album where they uh, were produced by Mr. Lang and also two of the members, Chris Dunn and um, founding member Broughton quit after this album and they were left as a four piece. And the next uh, release, Heads Are Rolling. I think it had a relatively okay, it's gonna reduce to four members. The critics were fairly, still fairly um, nice uh, towards them. They did tour after this. Um, 
they were on, like I said, they were on Atlanta in the States and Canada with this. I think they uh, toured with, um, oh, what is the name of that? It's two, two Americans. Sorry, I can't remember the name now. Uh, but final album uh, comes along, or they didn't know that at the time, of course. Uh, like funny thing about this album, every single version of this on Discogs that I found as a vinyl album uh, were made in Norway. So the final album was It's Personal. And there's still a four piece. Uh, but this failed miserably, um, did not chart. And uh, as you see, it's still, still on this label here, as this is a European copy. And um, the end result was that uh, they were dropped from the record label and they were uh, incapable of getting uh, signed to anyone else. So that was the end of City Boy. Um, I think that's quite sad. Maybe they'd run their course, but I mean, they, in my opinion, should have had far more success while they were still around. So what happened to the members? Well, I'm not going to go into all of them. Uh, Lol Mason, he um, went on to um, uh, start a band called uh, Masonettes. They had a hit in 1984 with Heartache Avenue. He then went on to be a scriptwriter for TV and radio in the UK, and he unfortunately passed away after uh, surgery on the 30th of July 2019. Um, Steve Broughton, he went on to write songs for other artists. Uh, he wrote, uh, among others, for uh, um, Cindy Lauper. Uh, he wrote uh, She Bop with her, and The Goonies Are Good Enough. Uh, he also went on to be uh, a vice um, a vice president of um, A and R at Jai Records. He's worked with uh, Britney Spears, and in Sync, Justin Timberlake, um, as a producer and songwriter for Joan Jett, Jefferson Starship, Peter Frampton, among many others. Uh, so quite an illustrious career uh, behind the sort of scenes, sort of uh, and. Uh, if you are interested in um, CD Boy, um, don't want old vinyl. And there are some early 2000 copies on CDs. And the four first albums um, were uh, released on Cherry Red as double albums with bonus tracks in 2013. I have one of those, and uh, they're good. Cherry Red, are usually quite good at doing that. So that was a look at uh, City Boy and a completion video from me. Hope you enjoyed that. Please click like and subscribe and I will see you again in another video. Take care guys. Bye.